We are on board the Aegean Odyssey. Its specialty is cruising the coastal waters of the Mediterranean. Classified as a mid-sized ship, it is able to visit ports that are too small for larger vessels, and in particular, able to navigate around the scenic islands of the Adriatic and Mediterranean. Behind me is the island of Korchula. From pirates to princes, Korchula has had many masters, all seeking to use the island to ease their passage along the Adriatic. The Greeks who first colonised the island in the 6th century called it the Black Corfu because of the thick forests that once covered the island. Because the Aegean Odyssey is too large to dock next to the old town, we are being shuttled to the dock area near the old town by one of the boat's tenders. Korchula is situated on the Adriatic Sea, some 63 nautical miles southwest of the city of Split. It belongs to the central Dalmatian archipelago and is separated from a nearby peninsula by a narrow strait. In the 9th century, infamous Nerepian pirates sailed this area of the Dalmatian coast and Venetian merchants were willing to pay an annual tribute to keep their shipping safe. Today is a beautiful August day and the local Mediterranean climate is certainly living up to its name. It's about 26 degrees with a gentle breeze off the sea. The average rainfall in this part of the Adriatic is over a metre, but today the skies are clear. In the Middle Ages there were 12 of these 14th century towers and thick stone walls surrounding Korchula Old Town. They were built to keep out marauding pirates on the high seas or invading barbarians from the land. The highest peak on the island is just 568 metres and the hill area behind the Old Town, for those who want to walk up a thousand steps, is the place to get elevated views of this Old Town with St Mark's Church Spire standing out from the rest. Boating is a necessity of island life, not only here for the locals, but also for the rich and famous who moor their boats along the quay. Along the foreshore is a large tourist map showing the old town, and our local guide explains. Here you can also see half of the island of Korchula. The island of Korchula is approximately 50 kilometers long. It has 272 kilometers square. It's the sixth island by size in Croatia, but the most populated. 17,000 people live on the island. In the town of Korchula, we are 3,500 persons, but in the city walls today, just 300 persons live. Marco Polo is one of them, of course. Yeah. The main economy today is tourism. The promenade that surrounds the city wall is a place to go for a coffee or a meal. Local island cuisine has a strong identity, especially with the desserts. The promenade is named after a 17th century Croatian poet and dramatist, regarded as one of the greatest Croatian writers of the 17th century. Then we even had two years of British ruling. It happens. 
Then we had a hundred years of Habsburgs, the Austrians. Then Italian occupation again. After them, first Yugoslavia, Kingdom of Serbs, Croatian, Slovenians. First World War, Balkan War, Second World War, and the Second Yugoslavia formed of six republics. Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia. Then we had this last homeland war, and all these republics today are independent states. The Independent Republic of Croatia was recognized in 1992. The ramparts along the promenade feature several original battle-hardened cannons, originally on the castle walls to protect the town from marauding 15th century pirates. The main entrance to the old town is through the Revelin Tower, a monumental tower completed in 1496. Originally there were only two entrances to the city, the other on the eastern side. On the tower, there is a coat of arms to honour the Trojan hero Antinor, who, according to ancient legend, founded Orcula. It is easy to get lost in the romantic streets of Cortula, and almost every narrow alleyway has steps. Dominating a little square at the heart of Cortula is the magnificent 15th century Gothic Renaissance Cathedral of St Marco. Built from limestone quarried on the island, construction took 500 years, being completed in 1806. With Venetian lines above, intriguing details of the facade include carvings of a squatting Adam and Eve. We know this one is Eve because she has longer hair. Inside, the nave soars 30 metres above us the roof being supported by exposed limestone pillars. Behind the elaborate 15th century ciborium and over the main altar is a painting called The Three Saints, including St Mark, St Bartholomew and St Jerome, an early work by Tintoretto, who is considered one of the greatest Venetian painters of the 16th century. In the south nave is another original Tintoretto, and considered one of Cortula's national treasures called the Annunciation. Opposite the cathedral is the elegantly ornamented Arnivi Palace, now housing Cortula's museum, and nearby in the square, the Bishop's Palace. The Church of St Michael dates from 1408 and was restored in 1615. Around the doorway is the story of life, Anti-clockwise are symbols of birth, marriage and death, with a good Christian life in between. Balconies are a feature of the old town. Some have low barriers to protect a lady's modesty, and some are open, obviously only for gentlemen. All are a fascinating look at the 15th century Venetian architecture, but unfortunately they're disappearing. The streets off the main street are arranged in a herringbone pattern, allowing for the free circulation of air, but protecting against strong winds off the Adriatic. The ones on the north side are curved. The ones on the south side are straight. Almost all of Cortula's narrow streets and alleys are stepped. It is certainly a place for the fit and healthy. Next to the 11th century church of St Peter, possibly the oldest in town, is a poster denoting Cortula as the birthplace of the renowned 14th century traveller Marco Polo. Unfortunately, there is absolutely no evidence to support this. It is known he was a Venetian merchant, though he is better known with his father and uncle to have discovered the famous Silk Road to China. This is the house of the Di Polo family known to exist in Cortula at least from the 13th century. So because of this association, the people of Cortula are quite happy to call Marco one of their own. It is also known that he was taken prisoner by the Genoese in the naval battle of Cortula, and he wrote a book called The Travels of Marco Polo. Unfortunately, many simply did not believe the stories he told.
we are leaving the medieval town and outside we come across a square and a street called April 19, 1921. This is the date when Croatia was separated from Italian rule. The brass fountain in this square commemorates June 13, 1986, when water from an aquifer from a dam on the Naripa River began to flow, thus liberating the residents of Korchula from a centuries-long lack of drinking water. This part of town has shops, banks and hotels. The tourist kiosks offer something different. Pottery and jewellery made from the local limestone for those who want to take a little bit of Korchula home with them. The hotels and B&Bs on the hill above the old town offer some of the best views and the houses are more modern than those in the old town. But with few roads, one still has to negotiate with thousands of steps. On a hot day, what better place to be than the cool and remarkably clear waters of the Adriatic? Our day in the medieval old town of Korchula is almost over, so it is back to the dock to catch our tender back to the Aegean Odyssey. And then, it's off to our next exciting destination. This time, it will be the Croatian city of Dubrovnik. Or for those fans of the TV series Game of Thrones, King's Landing. Thanks.